invite you to be seated, and if you would again open your hearts and your minds this morning as we ask God to bless this word, let us pray. Almighty, holy, and sovereign one, you who are with us because we have invited your presence into this place. And so it is with that invitation that we stand now on holy ground, holiness that is created because we have come holy and fully into your presence. So open us, O God, now so that we might hear you, respond to you, and direct the ways of this church and this community. Allow us, O God, to be immersed in your Holy Spirit so that she might have her way amongst us and lead us in the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, now I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, Mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I said at the beginning of worship, we're in the midst of a sermon series here at Cathedral of Hope called Faithfully. And over the last few weeks, we've been talking about how God's faithfulness is paramount to us in our faith journey and how paramount it is to us in our experience of God's self in our lives. I think we shared right at the very beginning of this sermon series that reality that God invites us to know God's faithfulness in our lives. And if we would just take a look and uh, inventory of our own lives, perhaps we would see over and over again God's faithfulness to us, reminding us that God is with us always in the good times and in the not-so-good times. That the journey of faith is a journey that enables us to see God's presence vividly and creatively and wonderfully. And sometimes that is in the great majestic of God's miracles, and sometimes it's in the hands friendships that we establish in communities here at church. The way in which we see God's faithfulness isn't always in the way that we share it from our ancestors' perspective, but enables us always to know that God is a faithful God a God that is constantly with us. There is a promise that is given to us in the great commission and commandment of Jesus that I will be with you always. God never promised us a rose garden, but God did indeed promise us that God would be with us. On that first Sunday, we shared that poem, The Footprints, that reminds us that at times when we look back in our lives and we think that we're on our own, it's at those times that perhaps God has been more faithful than ever, lifting us up and encouraging us on our way. Faithfulness, faithfully, that God that is faithful toward us and is with us always. It is from that sense of faithfulness and that sense of knowing God's presence in our lives that we move swiftly to being reminded that, that, that God invites us, therefore, to come with a place of sense of gratitude and with thanksgiving. And we challenged one another on that Sunday to be reminded that if we could just enter into every day with a sense of thanksgiving and with a sense of gratitude, what our lives might do in the transformation of them in peace. So often we enter into a, a new day with a, a list of, uh, of things that we have to do. Instead of perhaps starting with a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving, and perhaps if you think you have nothing to be grateful for or thankful for, perhaps the thing that we could be grateful for this morning is that God got us up this morning and got us here for our nine o'clock service. <laughs> for some of us, that is a great challenge. Being grateful to this God, sensing our gratitude and affording God that blessing. I believe that when we change our attitude, our lives change. That if we were truly to come at all of our life circumstances with just the sense of where is the blessing in the midst of it all, we might be able to transform ourselves. Now, I know that for some of us that's much easier than others. I'm a person that really sees everything half full than half empty, and that is no criticism of anybody else. I speak only for myself. But I tend to always see things from a place of where is the blessing to be found? Where is it that I can see God's hand in the midst of it all? Last week, we talked about faithfully being, and we celebrated the fact that here at Cathedral of Hope, we just don't aren't an open and affirming church. We're an open and celebrating church. 
that we want to celebrate people wherever they are on life's journey and celebrating all that they are. We called forth within ourselves the very best of our authenticity and invited us, if you would remember, if you were here last Sunday and if you were the first time visitor, then perhaps this is an inside thing, but I'll just tell you anyway, we shared the nursery, the nursery rhyme. We put our whole selves in and our whole selves out. In, out, in, out, and we shake it all about. I call it the hokey cokey. I think you call it the hokey pokey. But whatever it is that we call it, it is about reminding us that we've been called to bring our whole selves to the table. So many places in our world we're invited to leave parts of us at the door. The things that perhaps others don't see as respectable. But God invites us to bring our whole selves in and to allow the transparency, the authenticity of who we are to be the celebration of the gift that God created in each and every one of us. What a journey that we have been on on these last few weeks, and we have two more weeks to go. Oh, what a journey we will still have together. Today we come to honor this God who has brought all of this into fruition into our lives, now to invite us to faithfully live to faithfully live in our fullness, and to faithfully live into the experience of God's abundance and blessing. It's not always easy for us to live into God's fullness and into God's blessing in our lives, but the invitation of Scripture this morning is to find that place within ourselves that we can faithfully live. We've been celebrating this morning people who have faithfully lived and who have faithfully given all of themselves to this great place. Larry, who will be leaving us this week, celebrating 38 years of ministry here at Cathedral of Hope. That's longer than many relationships last. <laughs> 38 years of faithfully living. David Hughes, who passed away this morning, but who faithfully lived his life within this great cathedral of hope, offering himself to the great commission of Jesus. And I believe that David receives his reward this day as he now rests in peace out of pain and in the loving arms of a grateful God who says to him, welcome home, good and faithful servant. Scripture reminds us that to be absent from the body is to be present with our God. And I don't know about you, but when my time comes, hopefully not too soon, I will celebrate the fact that this God who has faithfully journeyed with me has faithfully welcomed me home. But in the meantime, there is much work for us to do much work for us to faithfully live and to faithfully bring ourselves into the ministry of Christ. The Scripture reading this morning reminded us that we are called not to be worrying about tomorrow, but to know that today has enough worries of its own. Who of us can change the outcomes of tomorrow by worrying about it? And so the Scripture reminds us that we are called not to worry about what we will eat or what we will drink or what we will do or who we will be, but rather to be present in this moment. It's hard for us to be present in a moment. There are so many things that cause us distractions in our lives. Perhaps some of us are worried about what's going to happen in three weeks' time here in the United States of America, and we're worrying about what's going to be. Perhaps some of us are worrying about where we will live or what we will eat or where brunch is going to be today after the nine o'clock service. I'm sure that there are a list of places that we could go to. Scripture reminds us this day in the gospel story that we should not worry about tomorrow or worry about these things, but rather to be in this present moment. I don't know about you, but there's no better place that I would want to be on a Sunday morning than here at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Now, of course, I have to be here, <laughs> although perhaps I don't. But to be present means that we bring all of ourselves and to faithfully live this moment to faithfully live knowing that we have offering to give to this place and to this community in which we share. This season of faithfully giving, faithfully living, this season of generosity is about reminding us of our personal responsibility to be in the moment, 
and to be with our sisters and brothers building what is this cathedral of hope. Not just the bricks and mortar of this church, but what it is that we do in the world and in the community. How we bring this gospel to life as we embody the presence of Christ in our lives. Not just on Sunday morning at nine o'clock for this hour, but beyond the hour into the everyday living experience of our lives how we truly represent who it is that God is making us and creating us to be, to know that we can cast our cares and all of our worries upon the God who is faithful. And from that place, we faithfully live, not always knowing the outcomes, not always knowing the plan, not always following the strategic plan of a congregation, but, but knowing that somehow God is in the midst of it all and that God will work it out if we would but faithfully live. I know for myself that when I try to make things happen, they don't. But if I would faithfully live and faithfully rely on this God who has been faithful to me, somehow things work themselves out. Anyone else have that witness and experience this morning in your own lives? You can talk back to the preacher at nine o'clock. It really is okay. <laughs> it helps me know that you're still there. <laughs> faithfully living, sisters and brothers, and giving of ourselves. Here at Cathedral of Hope, we have been reminded that in this new season of our church, we are not only a church that has been founded in the LGBT community, but we are a congregation that is moving beyond the LGBT community to a place where all people get a place at the table. And I don't know about you, but that excites me so much about where Cathedral of Hope is going in the days and months and years to come. To know that this table that was set first for us is a table that we now get to set for the rest of the world. Our mission to reclaim Christianity for Dallas and the rest of the world. And you might ask how on earth we do that, but we do that through the way in which we broadcast our worship services on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And we're reaching now more than 100 countries and over 70,000 people watch Cathedral of Hope as a part of their spirituality. Sisters and brothers, you get to make that happen here every Sunday as we faithfully live our lives. What a joy, but what a great responsibility that God has given to us that we might faithfully live this good news of Jesus the gifts and talents that each and every one of you bring to this place on a weekly and daily basis makes a difference in the world. And just this week, we will begin to move our benevolence ministries of our church into Dallas Hope Charities, which is a new form a 501c3 that we've established as our congregation in order that we might expand our territory and expand the good works that we are doing here at Cathedral of Hope, not just through eye care on Mondays and breakfast at Cathedral of Hope on Saturdays, but through our helping baskets, our blessing bags that we do on Wednesdays, and folks in the congregation get to take those in their cars and issue them to the homeless in our community, but through our work with uh, helping people in the career assistance program and getting people back to work and writing new and creative CVs that will make an impact. Great work that we are doing here at Cathedral of Hope and yet more that is yet to come. I look forward to seeing how our benevolence ministries expand within our congregation, not just to bless us, but to know that we are blessing this world. Isn't that what faithfully living is all about? Is to know that the blessing that God has given us is a blessing that we get to share with everybody else. That there is an abundance that pours out of our lives if we would but stay present knowing that this God that we worship will clothe us, feed us, love us, and embrace us. From that place of gratitude, we come to be of service. This season of faithfulness should challenge us to cast all that we have upon this God that we worship. And through that, we are able to give back, not holding on to it ourselves, but knowing that quite honestly, if we hold on too tightly, then there is no room for us to find new blessing. 
But if we would but let go of the blessings that we have been given and share them around, there is yet more that God wants to lavish upon us. That scarcity mentality needs to be eradicated from the Christian church. We are a people of abundance and blessing and anointing, so much so that God says we do not need to worry about how we will be fed, for there is enough to go around. Now, of course, that means our cooperation, because if we do hold on to it ourselves, then it is hard to share it with others. It is that social gospel, that gospel of justice that reminds us that we must always allow those blessings to flow from us. Last night, I tried to put Sophia to sleep. Sophia is my two-year-old. She did not really want Daddy to put us to sleep. She really wanted Papa to do it, but it fell on me for my responsibility. And so I asked Isaiah, how do you normally put Sophia to sleep? Because often I am still here at Cathedral of Hope when Sophia goes to bed. And he said, well, you ask her what books she wants to read. I didn't know that Sophia could tell me what books she wants to read. She wanted to read two books, My Two Daddies and Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. <laughs> so we read those two books. And then I said to Isaiah, so what is the next thing that you do? And he said, then we say our prayers. Not bad for a preacher's kid. <laughs> and so we, I said to Sophia, so shall we pray? And she put her hands up like this. Oh, it was so cute. <laughs> and we began to pray. And as I began to pray with her, I began to pray about the blessing that she is in my life and the blessing that she is to this congregation. And, and through those blessings, I, I asked God to protect her during the night and then in the morning to allow the blessings to flow out of her into this world. I tell you, it was an amazing experience. We finished our prayers and turned off the lights and she wouldn't go to sleep. And so I eventually had to yield to Papa to come and finally put her to sleep. See, I'm not good at everything. <laughs> I believe, Cathedral of Hope, that we are building a church for the generations that come after us. And to know that Sophia, as she comes amongst us, and all of the new folks who come amongst us, they come amongst us as an open and celebrating church where all the blessings that we have been given are able to flow out of us and into the world. And to see that transformation so that we need not worry so much about our own lives, but worry enough about the lives of those who are less fortunate than ourselves and to enable all of this world to find the abundance of God's grace that we have found for ourselves this day. And to further the mission of this cathedral, to be a place where we reclaim Christianity, and to reframe it in such a way that people will see the good news of Jesus, not good news with borders and boundaries, but that radically inclusive good news that God welcomed us and we have been called to welcome others, wherever they are on their spiritual journeys. At the 11 o'clock service, we're going to be welcoming new members to our congregation. We have 50 new members joining Cathedral of Hope this morning. 50 new members. Eight of those folks will be baptized. Now, in the last class, which was Reverend Aaron's first class, she often reminds me there was double that number. <laughs> but over this past year, we would have welcomed over 200 members to Cathedral of Hope. And this class will be the last of 2016. <laughs> now, one of the ways in which we make transformation is engaging those people in ministry and enabling those folks to find their place at the table, just as we did. 
What has been interesting over this last year is watching the vision that we spoke into the universe coming to truth. And the last two classes of our membership class have probably been some of the most diverse classes that we've witnessed here at Cathedral of Hope in quite some time. And this particular last class, we will be welcoming many, many straight members amongst our church. 